Coming up in the news tonight, a memorial service for the victims of Hurricane Dorian on the island of Abaco today. 67 new cases reported in the Ministry of Health latest COVID-19 report. And how are sales at uniform stores as students return to a virtual platform? The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news tonight. Today marks the two-year anniversary of the passing of the deadly Category 5 Hurricane Dorian. The island of Abaco suffered tremendous loss of life and infrastructure when that storm made landfall. But two years later, the community has come together to make significant strides in their rebuilding efforts. This morning, the community paused to mourn those lives that were lost while also celebrating and uplifting survivors. Lord, we are no better than those who lost their lives on this date. But for your mercy and but for your grace, we stand erect today, being able to sing oh, the goodness of God. Community members, religious leaders, and government officials coming together for a remembrance and celebration service honoring the victims of Hurricane Dorian two years later. The devastating hurricane claiming the lives of many and leaving a trail of destruction on that northern island. Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Darren Henfield says that today, residents stand hand in hand to remember the souls that were tragically lost during the monster storm. He says, despite the catastrophic loss, Abaconians have come together to rebuild their lives and communities. I stand here to declare, great is his faithfulness. And we have come this far by faith. To the many families who have lost loved ones during the passage of Dorian, we continue to stand with you and pray God's continued strength and comfort for you as you press forward. Today, I take this opportunity to express sincere thanks to all of our pastors, our church leaders, our local and regional and international partners who have continued to assist us in the rebuilding and revitalization of our island. Your efforts in assisting us to restore homes, schools, churches, clinics, and utilities epitomize service above self and unconditional love for mankind. President of the Abaco Christian Council, Pastor Eggert Tinker, says he believes that going forward, there must be a national service to honor victims and survivors of Hurricane Dorian. He also challenged all Bahamians to live in unity, particularly during this election season. He says now, more than ever, it is time to put God first. It is our charge. It is our charge to do it for the next generation and to teach them the history of this Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I've been to plenty places, the Caribbean. I've spent 10 days in Israel. When you hear the siren, that means get low, get in a bunker. I tell you, I've never heard a siren in the Bahamas other than an ambulance or a police car. I tell you, this is the best land in the whole world. Let's not spoil it. Let's keep it that way. Let's agree to disagree. And the truth be told, we are still better together. Leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, the Honorable Philip Davis, says that the September 1st date will forever be etched in the minds and hearts of all Bahamians. We share in the pain and grief that you underwent. And so this morning, didn't come to speak much but merely to have, be here in present with my wife, to let the people of Abaco know and Grand Bahama that we share your loss. We continue and st continually to still hear your cries and hopefully those cries will soon turn not to laughter, but as the saying goes, weepeth Endure it for the night, but joy comes in the morning.
the service concluded with the singing of the national anthem. Now, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, also paused today to honor the memory of the lives that were lost during Hurricane Dorian. Minister Thompson calling this a day of remembrance, not only for the lives lost, but for all who still deal with horrific memories of that day. He says that he knows that there are families that are still affected by the events of that day, and that is motivation for more to be done. While we remember, we want to pull on those encouraging stories and those encouraging uh, times that uh, people have had. I've had an opportunity as I uh, make my way through uh, East Grand Bahama to speak to a lot of the families who have gone through Hurricane Dorian. And the personal stories of really what have been miracles of survival really speak to the strength and speak to the um, passion, the resilience, uh, the determination of the spirit of those persons, not just in East Grand Bahama, but also throughout the entire island of Grand Bahama. Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, the Honorable Michael Pintard, also reflecting on the destruction left behind by Hurricane Dorian. He says he continues to express his sympathies to those that lost loved ones and to those that are still traumatized by what they went through during the monster storm. There are many families today that are still in the rebuilding process. And we know that despite the fact that many families have uh, recovered, uh, many families have rebuilt their homes, there are still residents who are in the process of doing so. And I joined with my colleagues in reaffirming our commitment to continue to help every single family in Grand Bahama and in Abaco to rebuild community by community. I wish to celebrate all of the Bahamians and our friends of the Bahamas who came to our collective rescue in making uh, contributions of their time as well as resources to help residents rebound. Now the deputy leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, Chester Cooper, and the PLP's five Grand Bahama candidates also paying tribute to Dorian victims at the memorial site in East Grand Bahama. And now to the latest COVID-19 dashboard, 67 new cases reported in the Ministry of Health's COVID report for August 30th. 46 cases are in New Providence, 7 in Grand Bahama, 4 in Abaco, 6 on Eleuthera, 2 in Exuma, and 1 in Andrus. 170 persons are listed as hospitalized. 28 of those cases are in Grand Bahama, including 4 in the intensive care unit. The death toll is now at 496 with 20 under investigation. 3,103 cases are active with a total of 14,710 listed as recoveries. In other news, students in the public school system and some local private institutions returning to the virtual learning platform this week. But what does this mean for uniform sales this back to school season? Well, our ZNS News team visited a number of local uniform stores today to find out how those sales have been shaping up. Jamila Mizik reports. The back-to-school shopping season is usually the busiest time of year for uniform sales on the island. However, in recent years, due to Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been some changes in those sales. Local uniform stores Pat's Uniform and the Uniform Factory say, for the most part, uniform sales have been going well, despite the recent announcement by the Ministry of Education that students will be returning to the virtual learning platform, noting that some parents have been taking advantage of the VAT-free holiday on school supplies. The uniform sales has been, you know, our normal traffic like previous years, so I'll say it's been going well. 
I've seen a slight decline, but you still have those parents that are coming in that are hopeful that schools will be going face to face soon. And then you have those persons that still want to take advantage of the Novat holiday that's on from, it started August 16th and it'll stop September 6th. So you still have those persons coming in and taking advantage of that and shopping just to have those uniforms for when school does go face to face. Uniform sales has been going very well. People being taken advantage of their Novat. Uniform sales were more better before they announced that school would be going virtual, but since they announced that school would be going virtual, we had a, in, a down increase in people coming in to buy a uniform, but we still have customers coming in to get school uniform for the new school year. Now over at John West Shoe Store, John Tyler Ford says it is a similar situation. Obviously in comparison to in-person years, um, it's not as much of an influx of persons, but uh, we are appreciative for what is happening. I noticed that it's mostly younger kids seem as if that they're going back to school. So we have been seeing a good amount of support from that demographic. Um, but as far as like, um, people are still coming in and shopping, not as much for school shoes. Some people are coming in and getting um, shoes to hold for later, um, especially while they're trying to take advantage of the VAT holiday. And that's advisable. Now the VAT holiday on school supplies will end on September 6th. This means that items under the VAT holiday will be VAT free until that time. They are encouraging parents to take advantage of the opportunity while they still have a chance to do so. I would encourage them to come out and be prepared even if it's just one set of uniform. Just make sure that you have something because you just never know. I do encourage parents to still come out and shop for the no VAT season because when you come back you'll be spending more money so it's better to come and take advantage of no VAT right now while there's still no VAT going on and buy school supplies. We have school supplies, we have pants, shirts, belts, socks, undershirts, jockeys, everything. We have everything that you need so you could just come on down to Uniform Factory and take advantage of this last week of no VAT. You still got five more days, well six including today and it's a good opportunity to come and get a good discount off of shoes, 12 whole percent. Jamila Mizek, ZNS Network News. The newly appointed Director of Labor in the country, Quinton LaRota, officially takes office today. And tonight we have more reaction to this move. Vice President of the Bahamas Customs, Immigration and Allied Workers Union, Darren Brooks, says that they worked together for years and he is confident that the new Labor Director will do well in his new post. I think it speaks volumes um, for what they see in LaRota. I think that he's going to motivate his staff. I can only see good things going forward. Uh, the teachers union may consider it a loss, you know, but um, what he brings to the table for the labor department as a whole, um, I can, it, it just speaks volumes to the kind of person that he is, his worth work ethics and the government's confidence in him. So I wish him all the best. I know that he will do well, and we just, just keep him keep him in our prayers. Veteran labor advocate Lionel Morley adding that he believes that LaRota will bring new energy to the table. He says he believes that LaRota will be fair and balanced as a director. He shares one of his expectations of the newly appointed director. Is to bring legislation. Uh, to, bear, to be, uh, bring legislation where the tribunal, the industrial tribunal, can have the necessary teeth it needs in order to, to affect its own ruling. It is, it is wrong to put a, a, a mechanism in place with all of its structures. Okay, it's, it's, it, it almost appears as if it's a camouflage. It's just something to see, and, and when it, when in terms of substance, it's a great idea, great institution. It's, it's something to be commended. It usually, uh, we have real cooperative people from both sides, the uh, applicants and the respondent, but there are some real technocrats lawyers who eat, eat away at every little thing, uh, especially when they don't have cases, a case. So they pound the table and look for technical and legal arguments. And then the poor man who has to reach out to, to the industrial tribunal, and which is available to him or her, uh, go and wait for months for their matter to be heard and at the end of the day they meet a roadblock because there's these characters who tend to want to use the loopholes of the system. Uh, 
to circumvent or to deny due diligence. In the midst of a global health crisis, a former insurance executive is advising residents to ensure that they secure life and health insurance coverage. Shashina Roe Farkasin has more. Former insurance manager and agent David Wallace says Bahamians should be reminded that life and medical insurance is extremely important. Why? In the event of your premature death, you would then be, your family would then be in a position where they can pay off their mortgage and continue with the education of your children because if the breadwinner passes away, that income for the breadwinner is lost. And so your insurance, which you should have at least 10 times the amount of your annual earnings. So if you are earning $40,000 a year, you should have at least $400,000 worth of life insurance. He says young persons should also consider the importance of health insurance. I, I know young people have this tendency of wanting to live every day and spend everything. I think it's very important that we get the message to them that they ought to protect themselves because you see it every day where the GoFundMe accounts are too numerous to mention, persons needing medical assistance. You see the sponsor sheets. You see the cookouts. And a lot of this could be uh, alleviated if persons would, would have their own medical insurance. And while he admits that it may be costly, he says it will be worth it in the end. It is important for persons to make that sacrifice. Uh, and I know it's hard sometimes in this pandemic era, in the era where people are working less days, um, where they're not, there's not full employment. Uh, some people are part-time or partially employed. And so I think that, that then asks this persons to go in and sit with their insurance company make some arrangements. Uh, it is better. Yes, sometimes you would like to have a $200,000 policy, uh, and you should have it, but if you can't, then at least have $100,000. Um, it, it's able to assist. Better, it's better than nothing at all. Police on the island of Abaco investigating a traffic fatality. Reports are that shortly after 6 p.m. yesterday, officers from the Marsh Harbor Police Station received the report of a traffic accident that occurred on Crockett Drive in Dundas Town. Initial reports revealed that a black Honda Fit vehicle, which was driven by a male, was traveling north along Crockett Drive when the vehicle struck a male pedestrian. Police say the driver of the vehicle refused to stop and while traveling on Archer's Hill collided with a white vehicle. Both vehicles fled the scene prior to the arrival of police. EMS personnel arrived on the scene and examined the male pedestrian and found no signs of life. The male was later pronounced dead. Investigations continue into this matter. And stay with us, there's more news right after this break. 